32. The False Doctrine of the Holy Spirit Calcedon Report, number 334, May 1993 Few doctrinal heresies have received less attention than a remarkably audacious misuse of the authority of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. We have here one of the keys to an understanding of the modern world. When apostles and elders met at the Council of Jerusalem, they debated and discussed the matter at hand and concluded, It seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us. They thereby declared their decision to be that of God the Spirit also, a holy and infallible word. This set a pattern which the state in time imitated it, claiming for itself the same authority in its pronouncements as did the Council of Jerusalem. That is, the authority of God the Spirit. About AD 980, the Holy Roman Emperor Otto III was portrayed on a sacramental vessel as the protector of the Holy Ghost, because only he can restore the Jerusalem of eternal peace. To him is entrusted the dove of inspiration. Eugen Rosenstock Hussey, Out of Revolution, page 503. Earlier, the pagan Roman Empire had regarded itself as both church and state. The civil magistrates were also priests, and the emperor was the Pontifex Maximus, a title later adopted by the papacy. The states was, in Roman thought, the supreme religious institution. Ernest Barker, Church, State and Study, pages 11, 20 and 32. In The King's Two Bodies, Ernst H. Kantorowicz described the medieval political theology which in effect made the king a divine human being like Christ, and the state therefore as his church. Pope John VIII praised the Carolingian emperor Charles II as the saviour of the world constituted by God, whom God established as the prince of his people in imitation of the true king Christ, his son, so that what he, Christ, owned by nature, the king might attain to by grace. Page 87. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, our Lord declares, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. This text has been used to claim Christ's authority and infallibility for human decisions. Steadily, the decisions of civil councils claim the same authority. In England, under Henry VIII, John Moore told Thomas Cromwell, An act of Parliament made in the realm for the Commonwealth of the same ought rather to be observed within the same realm than any general council. And I think that the Holy Ghost is as verily present at such an act as it ever was at any general council. Charles T. Wood, Joan of Arc and Richard III, page 115. The presence of the Holy Spirit had been transferred from church to state, from general councils of the church to the parliaments and congresses of state. Part of this shift meant the divine right of kings and later parliaments and the healing touch of the saviour kings as they, quote, healed, end quote, the sick. Even more, it meant that the realm of inspiration and salvation had been transferred from the church to the state Many medieval and Reformation-era preachers moved peoples greatly. In the Middle Ages, men like San Bernardino, Savonarola and others, including unknown wandering friars, moved people powerfully and passionately. With the Reformation, people hung in the words of Luther, Calvin, Knox and others. As late as Jacques Saurin, great throngs listened to preachers as oracles of God as spirit-filled men proclaiming God's word. At the same time, however, politicians began to command people similarly. Whether in Parliament or Congress, these humanistic orators began to command great throngs, and men hung on their words. The people were unconsciously adopting the new view of the states as man's true church and saviour, and the status leader as an oracle commanding life and the future. 
As a result, political campaigns are now comparable to old-time camp meetings and revivals. They are occasions of intense passions and feelings by peoples whose hope for the future is a political hope. With the 20th century in particular, the state became man's saviour and a succession of political messiahs were in evidence from Woodrow Wilson on. The Holy Ghost was transferred from the church to the state and then secularised as a general will. Not surprisingly, Jean-Jacques Rousseau held the general will, the new Holy Spirit, to be infallible. Where the church has been held to be infallible, the triumph of church power has meant often a cruel regard for those in dissent. This, however, was a minor matter when compared to the powers of the infallible civil government. The 20th century has seen the triumph of statism and the highest percentage of mass murders, wartime deaths, state-created famines, slave labour camps, etc. in any century of all history. G. Eliot's 20th Century Book of the Dead documented the mass murders of statism. Hegel's humanistic doctrine of the spirit made the doctrine radically naturalistic and amoral. All restraints were removed, and the amoral, evolving geist or spirit, simply did what it did, and there was no moral law over it. John Moore's civil Holy Ghost had blended with Hegel's naturalistic, evolutionary spirit to create literally a, quote, holy, end quote, terror. St. Paul tells us, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 Where the Spirit of the modern state is, there is slavery and death. We fail to understand the modern age unless we recognise that it possesses its own doctrine of the Spirit. But it is not the Spirit of God, but something else. The state, having claimed to be the possessor of the Spirit, however understood, has claimed thereby to be the source of justice, righteousness and law. At the same time, churchmen have denied to God sovereignty and therefore the right to be the source of law and justice. Antinomianism has surrendered not only God's law, but also his sovereignty. For, as the first edition of the Encyclopaedia Britannica noted, Law may be defined, the command of the sovereign power, containing a common rule of life for the subject. For most churchmen, that sovereign is no longer God, but the state. They have sold their Lord for less than thirty pieces of silver, for nothing, in fact, But God the Lord, the King, remains, and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, will be heard. Let the nations tremble.